Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a quick video. We're going to go over the EC135 engine control switches or the engine start switches. So it's engine or it's engine off, idle, and flight. We're going to go over why we're looking at this, the requirements, how to replace it, the tools you're going to need, and go over a few things in the maintenance manual that are not very clear, uh, depending on what version switching panel you have. All right, so with that being said, we're just going to start off with... What you're going to need to do this job well you're going to need this you're going to need a switch the switch is part number 945 uniform november 01 q4 alpha alpha 8 bravo you're also going to need this tool uh this the tool in the maintenance manual is a different part number we'll go over that but if you i've changed these switches before before and i never had this tool i didn't know about this tool until about last year which is um my bad anyway AP-AIR240-1. Just Google it. It'll come up with AP tools. I'm not affiliated with them, but they have, looks like some quality tools on their website. Uh, how much is this one right here? 39 bucks. Oh, how much does the switch cost? A couple years ago, it cost $780. Of course, you're also going to need the extractor tool. It's the red. Pretty sure it's the red white. Part number for that is Mike 81969 slash 14-11. If we go to the aircraft maintenance manual, AMM 31-11-26-1, we see that this is part of the intermediate inspection, which is 500 hour inspection. So if you go to do this check, you're going to make sure that you don't have any power on your aircraft. Your helicopter is turned off, all right? Stating obvious things right now. <laughs> Okay, do the inspection of the engine switches, uh, which is the switching unit 20VE, as follows. Open up the protective covers, which is the guards on the engine switches. Set the engine switch to the position flight. Try to set the engine switch to the position idle without pulling out the lever, like this video shows right here. You just push down on it a little bit. Don't push down like a gorilla. You'll break it, okay? So no, nice and easy, nice and easy. Just give it a little tap, tap, tappy, tap a -roo. Just give it a little tap. If it's possible to operate the engine switch without pulling the levers, then replace the engine switch according to this chapter. You keep scrolling down. They also want you to look at, um, examine the locking grooves of the engine switches for wear. If the locking grooves of the engine switches are worn, replace them with the same chapter, okay? Like right there, that thing's worn out pretty good. The yellow switch, the part that you pull out, has that little uh, triangle piece that's, when it's brand new, it's nice and defined. And after some time, it just gets worn out. And where it catches on the switch itself, the housing, that, that part gets rounded off too, and you're going to want to look at that. So if those are worn out, then you're going to need to change it. No big deal. So this is like a secondary safety for the engine select switches or engine mode select switches if uh so it has these guards here so if you have the guard closed even if the switch is worn out and you bump it it should not go to idle but either way the last thing you want is someone goofing around up there and they bonk the switch and it, you're flying fat dumb and happy and all of a sudden you're at idle that's not good so it's double safeties right the guard and then the grooves the grooves that lock into the housing okay all right next we're going to that chapter it's amm aircraft maintenance manual 31-11-24-3 removal and installation of the switches of the switching unit 20 ve but one thing you need to know if you go to this chapter there's three sections or there's three see on the left side in the amm they all have the same Reference 311124-3. It's all the same. Okay, so you need to know, and it, it, you need to know what switching panel you have. Either way, it doesn't matter. We're gonna go through the top one. That's the one that is our aircraft, or most. That's all the aircraft I've worked on. That's what that's what they have. The one in the middle is a different configuration. But look, the top one. It doesn't tell you. It doesn't. It's not very clear on how to change the switch. So we're gonna have to go through it, and we're gonna have to go in the. The other section, the one in the middle. And the one on the bottom, that's for the cool kids who have the brand new helicopter. That is not me. I'm sorry. Maybe someday. It's good to have hopes and dreams, right? So again, the top one of the three in this section is, it says Effectivity 20VE. 
And if you look at the picture, that's what it looks like. What's it tell you to do? Remove the switching unit. Okay, not complicated. Go to that chapter. It's pretty simple. Then it says re remove illuminated plate 35 LG. We don't really need to do that. Hold on, let me back up. To the very top, it says removal and installation of switches of the switch unit. This is all the switches in the switch unit, but it doesn't go in great detail. The only ones we're doing is the engine select switch or engine start switch. There's engine one, engine two. You don't need to remove the illuminated plate to get to the nut, the castellated nut. They call it a spigot nut later. Anyway, so back to this. It says to remove the switch locks. The ones that concern us are 13 and 15. Those are the guards. And it just says remove them. Like remove the nut and the washer and remove, remove the locks or the guards. Well, cool, but you need a special tool. Not a big deal. You could figure that out. But anyway, we're just going to make it easier. We're going to go over this and make it easier and simpler. All right. So then it says, if you keep scrolling down, that's that, the same section that we're in. It says, disconnect the electrical wires at the switch. The switch that we're concerned about is 104KA and 204KA Kilo Alpha. Those are the start switches. How do you do that? It says, disconnect wires using suitable tool. Suitable tool your red and white extractor, get a handful of these because there's like 20 wires in the back. If you only have one extractor and you break it on the first one, dude, you're host. So get a handful of those extractors. Nothing that, nothing you guys don't know, right? Okay, cool. And that's pretty much it. That doesn't really talk about, it just says remove the nut, remove, remove the wires and reverse in, or install in reverse order. Cool. Not too much detail. So there's more detail in the second section, which is remove and installation switches of switching unit, but the effectivity is 20 VE dash SETO. I'm like, I've never heard of that before. Quick search in the help lens comes up with you go to system description section, which is SDS 31 dash 11 dash 20 zero two. Again, there's three, there's three sections on the left that have the exact same reference. So if we click on the middle one, which is 20 V E S E T O, you scroll down and you figure out what that, what they're talking about. Oh, well, I guess that makes sense. Provides the warning for single engine takeoff S E T O, which is cool. All the aircraft I work on, the company I work for made an SDC for what they call as bitch and Betty, which is your single engine takeoff warning. So we don't have any of these new boxes. It would be nice. They look better. Either way, if we scroll a little bit down in the system, descript system description section where it talks about the single engine takeoff warning system, I'm just going to read this because it sounds cool. It says the single engine takeoff warning system monitors the engine data link in order to detect if the pilot tries to take off in one engine in operative OEI mode. If a SCTO condition is detected, the red warning check engine on the warning unit starts to flash and a special audio gong, ooh, gong, can be heard. After five seconds, the pilot can push the audio reset button on the cyclic to reset the audio gong. If the SETO condition is still true, a permanent red warning comes on in the warning unit, and the standard audio gong can be heard. The pilot can acknowledge the alert in order to stop the audio gong. And I wonder what that new style audio gong sounds like anyway. If your pilot ends up flying on one engine, and disregards the warning, then old maintenance is going to have a crap ton of work to do, and maybe we can have a little bit of heart-to-heart -heart with our pilot. Just saying. And if you look on the right, the picture of the, um, the warning, or not the warning, if you look at the picture of the switching unit, it's not the one that we deal with. They have a nice little cover all around it. Cool. Let's move on. Oh, and they're also, if you go up to the top of the three, sections in the system description section it has ours which is uh from serial number 121 onwards without that cool single engine takeoff monitoring system all right moving forward like i said we already went through the first part of the removal and installation of our switching unit and it didn't have us didn't give us much detail so we go to the second one which is the single engine takeoff version switching unit 
which isn't what we have. It's it's different. It has different things, and I'll we'll talk about that right here. But it tells you explicitly how to take off the engine switch. Not like it's hard, right? But anyway, replace right here. Step one: replace the engine switch, engine one, as follows. And then it says, you know, no left uh, engine one and two are the same. We're just going to talk about engine one. Then it says remove engine switch engine one as follows again. Strange. Either way, step one, remove the screws two and the housing three. Oh, that's the nice little cover. The nice fancy cover that we don't have. Okay. Oh, right here. Remove the nut number six, which is the crazy round nut that has castellation marks on it. And it wants you to go to this maintenance task card. 20 dash 80 dash 20 dash 439 all right now we're making some progress all right and we'll go to that maintenance task card here in a minute though we're just going to go over removing the rest of the switch pretty simple it says remove the protective cover which is the guards pull out the engine switch from the front plate so you pull it um away from the front plate loosen the jack screws nine we don't have that on ours but that would be nice it almost looks like you don't have to repin all 24 wires it looks like it's just a connector or some sort of a connector. I'd really like to see a picture of what that looks like in real life. Man, that'd be cool to have if that's the way it is. Anyway, next, remove the engine switch, engine one from the switching unit. Simple as necessary. Remove the foolproof ring, number seven. That's like a little locking ring. It keeps it from twisting and make sure it's when it's in there your uh, switch won't twist or anything like that it's in the correct position when you have that anyway simple but this is more directions on how to do it even though this isn't not our switching unit and that's why i'm making this video just to try to help you guys out in case you're struggling all right so we're going to go to this maintenance task card it's uh, mtc 20-80-20-439 cool Going to read from the very top. It says, this card presents the removal and installation process for a switch, potentiometer, or circuit breaker, and all of those things, accessory. It says dual control lever, protective cover, and protective sheathing, but we're not going to worry about all that stuff. We're just going to go to the section where they talk about the switch, not the circuit breaker or the potentiometer. All right? Okay, the next little thing that they say, which is actually before the work, it says, uh, before you apply this procedure, read the acceptance rejection criteria for the assembly of these components. It takes you to another maintenance task card. We'll just look at that real briefly at the end. All right, scroll down a little bit. It says, removal of switch number one, potentiometer, potentiometer or circuit breaker number six, but we're doing number one right there. It says, remove the spigot type nut two using tool eight corresponding to the nut diameter C table one. Oh, cool. That's a pretty cool tool. That's not the tool I was showing you earlier, but this is the tool that works from Airbus. But if you scroll over in that table one a little bit to the part number series of the switch, which is 9XXUN, that's this switch. It says the torque is 2.5 Newton meters. And it says the tool is AH, I assume that's Airbus Helicopters, tool 131 or blah, blah, blah. But if you have that, that's awesome. I've never seen this tool before. All right, tool. Again, it's AP-AIR240-1, and it's 39 bucks on the internet. No worries. Okay, if you scroll down onto the installation, torque the spigot type nut to using the appropriate tool that we just talked about. Uh, to the corresponding torque values in table four. Again, the, ser the switch series is nine. It said XXUN, but this is 900UN. That's their series switch. And it says torque value of nut in Newton meters. It says two. Perfect. All right, next step after you install it. I know I'm ahead of myself, but we'll go back. All right, we'll do a quick review on other stuff. But once you install the switch into the panel using this round nut, it says check the assembly with the other maintenance task card it talked about earlier, which is 20-80-20-438. And we're going to go over that right now, just real briefly. Okay, if you go to that maintenance task card 438, it's just one above what we were just looking at. And you scroll down, it says checking the installation of switches, circuit breakers, and potentiometers, figure four. 
I have figure four highlighted over here. It has a lot of nice pictures and it talks about a lot of great detail. Scroll down again and it says acceptance criteria for the installation of the switches. And it tells you what to look for, how to install it the right way. And if you scroll down more, as you go to figure five, which is rejection criteria for the installation of the switches, which shows you how to do it wrong. Okay, it says, uh oh, this is wrong, this is wrong, this, this there. It talks about it in great detail. Go here if you have any questions, okay? I'm not gonna read it all right now. All right, so maybe you got a little ahead of myself or we'll just do a quick review of what we're doing. So take the switch switching unit or switching panel out of the helicopter, done. Put it on a desk or a bench, grab your chair, maybe grab a, a nice lit up, giant magnifying lenses with the uh, with the light on it, clamp to your table so you could write down all these numbers that on the back of the wire and stuff. So you have your switch disconnected from the switching unit, but it's hanging there with those 20 wires. I think it's actually 21 wires. I think three or four of them are just are uh, filled with that uh, those blanking pins. So it's just hanging there loose enough where you, you can get access to each wire one at a time. Grab your new switch, put it right next to it, and do one at a time. And don't let anybody talk to you. Like, go in your office and shut the door. Tell everybody, shut the F up. Like, leave me alone. Or you could go ahead and label all the wires like this one is. And I think it was just labeled, you know, left to right, one through whatever, 21 or whatever. Or write it down, right? Okay, A1 is wire one. Do whatever you want. Just don't screw up. Don't put the wrong pin in the wrong hole or you're going to let the smoke out of your helicopter and you're not going to know what to do. All right? Just be careful. Okay, so the new switch. 945 Uniform November 01Q4AA8 Bravo. Lots of pins, right? It's A. And look, it's not A123. <laughs> it's A132. It's not right. It's, uh, yeah, don't screw up. Don't, one wire at a time. Okay, don't screw up. Attach the switch to the plate. Snug up that round nut, castellated nut, lock nut, locking spigot nut, whatever they call it. Torque it. And now you're pretty much done. I, well, now you're pretty much done. You're done with that part. Now you put your switching panel back into the helicopter according to the chapter, right? Just like it says at the bottom of the section we were in previously with the switch replacement on 20 VE single engine takeoff version. That one tells you at the bottom. I think they both do, you know, reinstall your switching unit VE. This is us 20 VE reinstall it. Simple, simple, like four lines, connect the plugs, uh, put it into the helicopter, tighten the Zeus locks, and then, oh man, go ahead and perform the functional test of your switch unit. That's not like something that you just bang out in five minutes. It's not hard, but you have to, uh, let's go over it real quick. We're not going to read it all. You need to go there and read it and do this. All right. You have to disconnect a couple wires on the starters. So it doesn't start. You're going to power up the helicopter. You're going to follow exactly what they're saying line by line. All right. You flip this switch, you're going to get this. Flip that switch, the engine engine fails, lights are going to go out, blah, 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 blah. Not hard. And then you're going to reconnect the wires on your starter, put everything back together. You're going to do, what's it say right here? It says, uh, what's it say right here? Oh, perform pre-flight check. Great idea. Exterior check, interior check, pre-start check. Oh, that's a lot of detail. Then you're going to have somebody run it, unless you're qualified. And you're going to flip training mode and you're going to get certain lights. Follow what it says. And then shut down the helicopter and you're done. Sign it off. All right. No worries. Not a hard job. Not a hard job. But I just want to bring this video to you to show you this tool. Because I didn't even know there was a tool. Because I didn't go that far down this rabbit hole in the past. Probably like most guys. Somebody's like, hey, my engine start switch is not working or it's worn out or, or whatever. And they're like, here's a switch, you know, go knock it out, champ. So anyway, <laughs> good luck, guys. Hey, the other thing, too, is 
if you uh, if your pilot calls you and he says, hey, my engine won't start. Well, obviously, if you followed the checklist and the FADIC is on and everything's on and he switches to idle, which should start your helicopter and it does nothing, you hear no clicking or nothing. The next thing you do is uh, obviously go turn it off and then hit the vent switch. And if it motors, then your starter's good. If they're in the middle of nowhere, dude, the middle of BFE and they call you with this and the engine vents, but it won't start. That means your starter's good. Have them turn the helicopter off, all the power off, FedEx off, power off, and go to whatever um, engine mode select switch wasn't the one that was the one that wouldn't start, and just go up and down, man. Off, idle, fly. Do that like ten times because that might get them home. All right, there might be a tiny thing inside of this little switch that looks like it has like twenty. I don't know, you know, you got single pole, double throw lights, uh, switches. This is like 20 pole, 40 throw. I don't even know. There's tons of stuff in here that's moving around, and one of them might have made bad contact. Like it, like that switch might think that your FADIC is on. Your FADIC has to be off when you power up the helicopter. If it's on, then the start switch won't start the helicopter. And there's a lot of other things, but I'm not telling you guys what to do, but that could get you out of a jam. Just a heads up. All right. I know I'm blah, blah, blah on you guys to death. All right, cool. I hope that helps. I hope you guys found some value in this video. If you know of anybody who might be interested in a little bit of engine start selector switch <laughs> education, then this their way. I appreciate you guys tuning into the channel, honestly, and I'll catch you guys next time. All right, later.